Okay, hello again, beautiful calculus students. We are on the home stretch of our BC calculus material. Starting chapter 9, 9.1. Um, chapter 9 is very heavy duty, and so we're going to spend quite a bit of time on this. And so we want to get off on the right foot, making sure we understand everything carefully. Okay, so we're talking about sequences now, and sequences are what you think they are, just an orderly set of numbers. They are functions but they're functions that are based on where the input is always a positive integer. So for instance, the input might be 1, and that goes to something that we'll call a sub 1. We use the letter A to denote the mapping of our sequence. Okay, and then 2 goes to a sub 2, 3 goes to a sub 3, 4 goes to a sub 4. Those are just the general terms of the sequence, and then we get to n is mapped to a sub n. The general terms of the sequence would be written as you know, curly braces a sub n. Okay, that's usually how we define the sequence. So importantly, a sequence is a function, but it's not a function of real numbers. It is a function of integers. So let's look at a couple examples. Uh, just example one, a couple of these. 1a says that our sequence a sub n, curly braces a sub n, is defined as 3 plus negative 1 to the n power. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's look at the first term of our sequence. What is a sub 1? Well, a sub 1 is 3 plus negative 1 to the 1 power. Negative 1 to the 1 power is negative 1, so that's 2. a sub 2 is 3 plus negative 1 to the second power, which is a positive one, so this is 4. a sub 3 is 3 plus negative 1 cubed, third power, which actually brings us back to 2. So this is kind of an interesting sequence. It just bounces back and forth between 2 and 4. What's interesting about this is that it doesn't converge. Okay, if we talk about sequences, the big deal with sequences that we'll see is going to be whether or not they converge, and if they do, what do they converge to? And if they don't divert, converge, then they diverge. And that's also an interesting point. Okay, how about another sequence? This is example B, and our book calls this B sub n. Right? We usually say A sub n, but B sub n is just as good. And so our definition of this sequence is B sub n is n over 1 minus 2n. Okay, so this means b sub 1 is 1 over 1 minus 2 times 1. So that's 1 over 1 minus 2 is 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. b sub 2 is 2 over 1 minus 2 times 2, which is 2 over 1 minus 4, which is negative 2 thirds. Okay, you can see how this is going to go. I'll just squeeze one more down here um, in a different color just so it's legible. B sub 3. Well, I'm going to read this off of the book. B sub 3 just turns out to be negative 3 fifths. You can plug in the numbers to verify or just follow it in the book. And let's look at one more example from example 1. We'll look at uh, example 1D, part D. Part C is pretty straightforward. D uses a different kind of definition of a sequence. It uses recursion. Okay, if you program in Java or anything like that, you know what recursion means. So here we say that D sub n equals D sub... Well, it doesn't equal that. D sub n is defined such that... S-T... Such that A sub 1... Oops, I'm sorry. D... D sub 1 equals 25, and d sub n plus 1 equals d sub n minus 5. Okay, that's our definition of the sequence. Let me clean up these braces. Those do not look very good. Okay, that's our sequence, d sub n. Okay, so we could write our sequence terms now. d sub 1 we know is 25 d sub 2 is 25 minus 5, which is 20. d sub 3 is 20 
minus 5, which is 15, okay? Dot, dot, dot. Okay, not very complicated, but that is just to introduce the concept of defining a sequence using recursion. You're giving given one of the terms and then giving given a way to find subsequent terms based on the previous term. Okay, so we mentioned that oftentimes the interesting thing about limits is whether or not they converge. So to investigate the convergence, actually I don't want to do the example yet, we need to consider a theorem. To investigate the convergence of a limit, we have a theorem, theorem 9.1. Theorem 9.1 that basically says if I have a function, in this case, so this is not a sequence, this is a function. Limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, and I know what's limit, its limit is L, and I have a limit that maps to the function, okay, meaning that the f of n equals the nth term of the sequence, okay, that's a very important thing. So if that is true, then the limit of the sequence equals the limit of the function. So if this very important condition is true, then I can say that the limit as n goes to infinity, right, not x, we're talking about n, the integers, the inputs to the sequence, the limit as n goes to infinity of our sequence is also L. It's the same number. Okay, I mean, so what does this mean, this idea that, this thing, that the function and the limit have the same values for integers? That just means if I had some function like this, this is a function f, f of x. That just means for every time I hit a integer, 1, 2, 3, that my sequence, this is a sub n, the value of my sequence is the same thing as the value of the function. Okay, not so hard. Okay, but with that very important theorem, I will highlight it again, with that conditions, you know, these two things to be true, uh, that theorem is very important. So let's look at this example, example two, which asks about the limit uh, of the sequence that's defined this way, a sub n equals one plus one over x, oops, not x, one over n to the nth power. Well, you might see where this is gonna go. We know that from earlier in the year, there's a function that the limit as x goes to infinity of this function, one plus one over x to the x power equals infinity. Not, oops, I mean, not infinity. It equals e, right? Big mistake there, equals e. And remember that the uh, theorem had the limit equaling, you know, equals l, some finite number. Of course, this will also work with, uh, eventually we'll see that this will work with unbound limits, um, but we'll get there next. So if the limit of this function equals e and our sequence definition maps to the function, right? If I just plug in any integer here, I get the same value as our sequence, okay? So we satisfy the conditions of theorem 9.1. Now I know that the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus one over n to the nth power also equals e. Okay, I'll just do a couple more examples, then wrap up this part one of sequences. Uh, so, for instance, example three talks about uh, convergence or divergence of limits. Interesting case here is a sub n that we saw on the previous example. Example one, this is three plus negative one to the n. As we saw, that just has terms of two, four, two, four right, dot, dot, dot. So that limit doesn't exist. So limit does not exist because it's not two and it's not four. We have no way of knowing. It's not infinity either, okay? Sometimes we say the limit doesn't exist because it's infinity. Well, now we call that an infinite limit. But in this case, the limit doesn't exist because we can't tell whether it's gonna be a two or a four. There's no way of knowing. Infinity is not a number. There's no definite answer to that. Okay, another example, example B, says our terms, b sub n, again from example one, are n over one minus two n. So let's look at the limit as n goes to infinity of this. 
And so this is pretty straightforward, actually. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 2 over n. So this is the limit of the sequence. We're, not, we're just going to find out what's the final term. We're going to let n go to infinity. What does that infinite, infinite, infinity term look like? Okay, so this is the limit as n goes to infinity. And we could do our usual algebraic manipulation for this. Divide top and bottom by n. So we get n over n in the numerator, 1 over n minus 2n over n in the denominator. This term goes to 0, and so we are left with 1 over negative 2, and that's our answer. That is the limit as n goes to infinity of this sequence is negative one half. So as we go, as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the terms approach negative one half. It's almost, if this were a function, that would be an asymptote. Okay, now example four, the last example for this video, is show that this sequence converges. Show that n squared over two to the n minus one converges. Well, this is a sequence, so let's consider the function. So we use 9.1. Consider a function f of x equals x squared over 2 to the x minus 1. Okay, in the last chapter we learned how to do L'Hopital on this. So uh, this limit, so let me consider this limit as x goes to infinity of f of x turns out to be infinity over infinity, so that's indeterminate form, and therefore we can la hop it, and so by la hopital, the limit becomes the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over, or the derivative of 2 to the x, remember that one, that is log of 2, natural log of 2, right, times 2 to the x, and of course the derivative of negative 1 is just 0. Okay, so this becomes the limit as x goes to infinity of this. Oh, it looks like we have another infinity over infinity in determinate form. So let's hop it one more time. By L'Hopital, we get the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over log 2 squared. Log 2 squared times 2 to the x, and now we can see that this limit is 0. And so by theorem 9.1, the idea of mapping, that every term of this sequence is mapped to the value of this function when n is an integer, then we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is also 0. Okay, so I'll stop right here, and we'll do uh, another presentation to finish up this section.